Today's topic is significance of fit in design. Let us first understand what fit is. What is fit? Fit refers to the combination of appearance of the clothing and comfort derived when one wears a garment or clothing assembly and remain engaged in doing a task or moving casually whatever it is. So, these two in combination actually in a way refers whether the fit is right or not. Now, therefore, fit has two aspects. One is the comfort aspects that is whatever a person is wearing, whether it is comfortable to him or not and we will gradually you know, discuss what are the various aspects of comfort in connection with fit. And the other one is the appearance. These two aspects are very much part of the fit. Whereas comfort is basically related to individual's response. And the other one that is appearance is basically related to look and style. Since we you know handle or we manufacture different types of, of wearable products, some of them are meant for standard normal apparels of daily use, the other one is technical clothing. So, these two are the type of clothing material or clothing that we come across and it remains contact with our skin and hence in one case appearance becomes very, very important which are in the case of normal standard clothing that we use on, on a daily basis and the other one is the more important in the case of technical clothing. But in a way both are important to some extent to each other. Now, why fit is important? It is because as people move, skin belonging to different parts of the body elongates or stretches to various extent. The maximum could be to the extent of 35 to 45 persons and also this stress skin recovers. So, as we move our limbs, whenever we are performing certain task, we are bending or we are twisting or we are moving, we are folding our legs or folding our arms, whatever we do, the screen is always stretching. But the screen is such a beautiful material that it stretches and the kind of force that we need to stretch the skin is so little that we do not feel also and the skin also can recover whenever that particular configuration of the body is not there that is from bending we unbend it the skin will recover. But skin is bound to elongate to different extent depending upon the location of the body part. This is something what, what is important to know. Now, if it is so, a good fitted garment should allow the skin to extend freely without any restrictions. That is, if I put on something on us, we have to make sure that it should not create any hindrance to the stretching of the skin. So, a good fitted garment basically means that it will allow the skin to expand and to retract. So, that is a you can say that that sort of garment will be a good fitted garment and bad fit results in 
high contact pressure between the garment and the skin leading to restriction in blood flow that could be skin abrasion that could be pressure source with time that is chance of irritation. So, all of this are going to happen if we garment is badly fitted. So, this is the, the fundamental difference between a good fitted garment and a ill fitted garment. Fit influences tactile sensation as the contact area between the skin and the garment depends upon fit. Because some of the garments, especially the undergarments that we wear, will be always in contact with the skin. And hence, the kind of sensation that we receive through our nerves is should be pleasurable, that it should not irritate us, there should not be any itching. So, the fit is not proper, the sensation that we receive may not be very, very pleasurable and it may, it may create discomfort. The other thing is fit will influence the aesthetic appearance of the garment in own state that is how the garment looks from outside. So, this part of the feet is basically the look part or the aesthetic value of the entire garment that we wear to an outsider. So, these are the two very important aspects which are influenced by fit. Now, if we classify the garment into two groups as I said earlier also, that one is fashion garment or garment related to our daily use, where the main attributes related to fit would be first of all the grain of the fabric. And what is grain? Grain is the direction of the yarns in a fabric grain could be in terms of lengthwise grain, crosswise grain and bias grain. We will discuss about grain a little bit in the next slide. So, the direction of that the yarn takes generally in woven fabric, the, there are two directions that the yarn takes and they are orthogonal to each other. One is the warp threads and the other one is web threads. So, if the warps are going lengthwise, so how the threads are placed in a made up or in a garment that becomes my lengthwise grain and crosswise grain is how the cross threads, the web threads are placed. The other thing is construction lines that the, the cross construction line that is obviously a garment is not a single piece. Multiple pieces are joined together to give a 3D shape and that is the garment we wear. So, there will be always some joints between the pieces of fabrics and therefore, how these construction lines that is the sewing lines are placed on the body that also will be a part of the other thing is set of the garment, that the garment should be free from wrinkles when a person is standing still with the garment on. That is, it has to be, the body has a very complex shape. Our human body does not follow a typical geometrical shape. So, such a complex shape has to be covered by by sub by piece of clothes and therefore whatever is made finally when somebody is wearing a garment it should be free from wrinkles or there should be, should not be any bucklings otherwise we will say 
the feet is not really good. Balance is the symmetry and hangs away from the body identically on both sides. That is how the garment is falling on the body and whether the garment is properly balanced left hand side and right hand side of the garment. So, that is also a part of fit and the last one is ease. Ease is the difference between body and the garment dimensions. That has to be some amount of you no know, liberty for the limbs to move freely and to allow the limbs to move freely there is a need to have some amount of ease. That is the difference and ease is, is the difference between the body dimensions and the garment dimensions. So, we will discuss about them in detail little in the some in the coming slides. So, these are the actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 important attributes in relation to the fashion garments that is they are not technical garments. Now, we try to understand the grain a bit more. A fabric can become off grain during finishing. See the finishing process of the fabric there is a possibility that the warp threads or the web threads may, remain, may not remain perfectly straight with respect to the edges of the fabric due to uneven stretch on a on the stenter let us say or during some other process the threads might get part of the threads might get inclined and we will say it is off grain. Otherwise we would expect that with reference to the edges of the fabric all the warp threads should be perfectly parallel to each other. Similarly, the web threads should lie perpendicular to the warp threads. Garments that are not cut and sewn according to the fabric grain can stretch in places they should not and be uncomfortable to wear. So, while cutting and then finally, sewing cutting the patterns and then finally, sewing them it is very important that how the fabric pieces are being cut. Am I cutting them along the warp or along the weft or in the bias directions? Because the property of the fabric is different in three directions. In the bias direction we all know that fabric will stretch more, whereas in warp directions usually it stretch less and the web direction also is stretch little bit more in comparison to the warp directions. So, the stretchable property may differ a bit and hence the cutting keeping in mind the grains of the fabric is very important. Patterns are designed with grain in mind that is why the patterns that is the pieces of the fabric which we join together to give a 3 D shape. So, these patterns are actually designed with the grain in mind. So, that the body can take advantage of the amount of stretch or lack of given the fabric. So, in the pattern cutting the grains have to be kept in mind. See the different parts of the garment will be actually 
falling on different parts of the body. And different parts of the body stretches differently when somebody is bending or twisting or folding his legs or sitting or standing and hence the pattern pieces to be chosen in such a way that whenever at certain place if we need little bit stretch is required because that area of the skin stretches in certain you know, uh, your posture of the body then those areas should maybe we should try to cover them by a piece of fabric which has been cut along the bias directions because in that direction we need more stretch. So, this is therefore important that why do we need little bit more stretch, why do we need less stretch accordingly the pattern pieces have to be cut from the fabrics from the basically from the mostly woven fabrics. Fit in functional clothing when it comes then what is important? Fit should allow the wearer to move, sit and perform any tasks with ease that becomes very very important. In the case of functional clothing the look is not really so important how the garment is falling on the body or how does it look like. Some of these aspects will not matter there what will be what will predominate is the ease part and the ease part is connected to the ability of the body to move or to take any configuration while a person is performing some tasks that becomes most important of the, the design. That is see depending upon the task some people are working in mines, some people are firefighters, some of our some people will be working their soldiers and that could be police. So, different people dif depending upon the type of professions the we need the body to be very very mobile not only that the person the tax will need different postures of the human body and in those postures the skin is going to stretch differently in different directions and we must ha have adequate ease in our design so that the wearer should feel comfortable and perform the tax without any hindrance. The other thing is fit should minimize the extra energy to push against the fabric when body moves against the fabric. That means the fit should also make sure that there is no extra energy that the person puts in stretching the fabric while he is performing tasks. If he needs to fabric needs to be elongated or extended while performing certain tasks, then the body part of the energy is physiological energy will be spent in basically stretching the fabric itself. So, that extra energy requirement should be minimized. Say if there is somebody is wearing multi layer fabrics, in that case there is a possibility that the there could be chances that the two layers of fabrics are rubbing against each other. And if they rub against each other there could be a friction, so one has to overcome the friction and resistance and that will need extra energy by the person who is performing certain task. So, that means part of the energy will be spent in pushing the fabric against each other overcoming the frictional resistance that has to be avoided. These two becomes very very important from the consideration of functional clothing.
if your clothing is very heavy by weight or becomes very bulky, then also a person needs to spend more energy in carrying the fabrics with him. A bulky fabric may also create hindrance to the movement of the person. So, these aspects we have to keep in mind when we are thinking of designing a technical clothing for people who are performing different types of technical task. So, functional ease if we see there are two types wearing is one is wearing is that is should allow the person to move and perform every day task. Another one is functional is allows movement for the functional garment. So, these are the two types of ease, one is wearing ease and the other one is functional ease. So, one is more related to the performing day to day activity that is related to the wearing is that is is not very heavy you know uh, or complicated task somebody is doing whereas, functional is is more related to that where the it should allow basically the movement of the limbs without any hindrance. So, the extent of functional is differs from for type of garment and use. A garment next to the body skin will have less ease and the one to be worn over the other should have more ease. See there are obviously all of us will be wearing generally two layer of fabric. One is our your uh, underwears that we wear that is one layer on the top of it we will put our shirt or trousers the second layer. If it is winter then we put another layer which could be sweaters or jackets. If we go for too cold we may need another layer which is a overcoat. So, we keep adding layer after layer depending upon the situation that is the climatic conditions or the environment. So, the one that is next to the skin, the ease of that will obviously differ than the one that will be put as the last part of the garment. So, ease therefore, will differ depending upon how close it is to the skin. And the other thing is we have to take care of the friction also, this is very important, because the moment we try to put layers after layer or one garment over the another garment over the another garment piece, there is always a friction. That is now the friction will be between two layer of fabrics and this friction that could be noise generations and the friction may lead to more force that one needs to move his limb and hence this part that is friction we have to take care that is we have to minimize the friction that is the, the kind of fabric that we choose for the inner layer of a piece of garment and the outer layer of the garment piece which will be which is already there on the let us say on a person between these two layers let us say if I do it like this suppose here is a person is a okay. So, first is the inner layer inner layer will have two faces one is the interior that is the 
inner face and the outer face. Then there is another layer. piece or another piece of garment. So, any piece of garment will always have two faces, let us say any fabric that you choose, it will have two face, the upper face and lower face or front face or back face, whatever we say. Now, if the inner face, if this is the body let us say and these two are two layers of garment first layer of garment and the second layer of garment. Now, the inner face of garment 2 that is this face and the outer face of garment 1 it is between this this is the interaction between them they are rubbing against each other and therefore, if we want to minimize this friction here what we should do we have to then either change the surface characteristics of the face, face by maybe by some coating or applying some finish whatever it is or we can choose we can choose a some kind of you know uh, a fabric which is which gives very low resist low frictions value. So, point is that in some technical garment this selection of the inner face of the garment 2 and the outer face of the garment 1 becomes very, very important because we know that when the person is going to wear it, these two faces are going to rub against each other. And if we want to minimize the friction, how to minimize that friction? So, which type of fabric I should choose for the inner face of garment 2 or which type of fabrics I should choose for the outer face of garment P 1, garment layer 1 whatever we say. So, that is why this is also becomes very important especially when we are trying to design a garment from the point of view of functional ease. The other thing is you must remember heavier fabrics requires more ease. The fabric has to be heavy especially suppose we want to make a fabric which has to be protect a person against heat, high temperature. The fabric has to be quite thick or against a cold climate the fabric has to be thick one. So, it will be heavier and for heavier garments heavier fabrics will require more ease in comparison to a small a, a thinner fabric. Knitted garments or knitted garments or knitted fabrics require less ease as they are stretchable. So, there is this is the the property of the oh, we have already no, studied it in some previous lecture where we have discussed the how the property of the fabric differs from each other as we change the constructions. In general knitted garments or knitted fabrics are stretchable. There is a possibility to produce knitted garments or knitted fabrics which are less stretchable also, but on an average we can say the knitted construction is such because it forms lot of loops the fabric is always stretchable and hence it will require much less ease in comparison to a woven fabric. Here we are showing you let me raise a table that has given some idea about the ease. Now, if you see it, some typical values have been given for chest for in the case of garment from made from woven fabric. 
and the chest we need an ease of 3 inches and the waist it is half inch and the hips it is 2 inches. For suit jacket if we want to make chest is going to be around 3 to 6 inches because jacket will be always worn on the top of a inner garment that is vest and then a shirt and therefore, we need more is when it is a the garment product is it jacket. But if it is just a suppose normal shirt then this much is is good enough a 3 inches is is ok. So, it all depends therefore, that in different parts of the body also these requirements are different and the type of garment that we try to produce or make accordingly to the garment type also the ease is going to be different. Now, the considerations for right fit. So, what are the points that you have to keep in mind when your aim is to develop a garment or a wearable product which will give you the right fit. So, for achieving right fit one must take into account what first is the body size and its variations. What is the size of the body that is the person who is going to wear it we must know the dimensions of the body and the variation it has. If I want to make for a group of people then the body dimension also will vary from person to person. So, if it is for a group of people obviously, body size is variability has to be taken into account. Then comes the shape of the body, body shape may also differ from person to person change in body dimension to different postures at work. If we are want to design something for a person doing some technical function, then for different body postures how the body dimension is changing that also has to be taken care of. We need to know the properties of the fabric that we intend to use. What is the level of stretch in that fabric? Is it a cotton fabric or it is a polyester cotton fabric or is it a 100 percent polyester or nylon made fabrics like that this information or whether it is a open construction or non or it is a knitted constructions. These important because the properties will depend upon that. So, fabric properties especially the stretchability of the fabric has to be kept in mind. Then the weight of the garment we have to kept in mind because the fit requirement will differ depending upon the overall weight of the garment also. Then the bulkiness, the bulkiness becomes another important issue. Now, when the garment become bulky especially garments that are to be used in winter in very cold climate. In order to increase the insulation we make the garment very very bulky. So, that we can trap more air and we increase the insulation value of the garment. So, the garment bulkiness, bulkiness is too much then ease has to also increase. So, these aspects we have to keep in mind. Now, here fit and skin extension is important. We already have discussed something about it. Now, when people move skin stretches and recover that as already we have uh, discussed. Critical strain area of the body are knee, the seat, the back and the elbows. These are the very critical strain area of the human body. 
that is in these areas a lot of change in dimensions because the skin will stretch. Skin is a such a material that it is stretchable and with very little force it can stretch easily. In tight fitting garment the fabric must elongate to accommodate the body movement and then recovered also. That means, the it is not only the extension part of the of the fabric that is important, the recovery part also we have to see. Only extension, extensibility is not enough, the material should be able to recover the extension. The three essential component to meet skin strain that a designer can really take into account, that is how to take care of the skin strain. Here one thing is garment fit, garment slip and the fabric stretch. We can allow the garment to slip over the skin also and thereby the garment can, uh, the, if the garment slip uh, then also the, it will not create hindrance to the movement of the limb. or if we use a stretchable piece of fabrics, then the, as the body dimension changes, the fabric also will stretch and this dimension will also change. So, fit, slip and fabric stretch, all of them can be looked into while we try to make sure that the screen is allowed to extend freely whenever the body moves. Garment fit is provided by the space or the allowance for the screen strain, which is determined by the ratio of body size and construction of the garment design. That what basically means the garment fit here. That is the ratio of the body size and the size of the garment, that is how much extra allowance that we are giving with respect to the size of the body. And the garment slip in turn is influenced by what? It is influenced by the friction between fabric and skin. And the other one is the friction between different layers of the garment. As I said in the previous slide while discussing that there is a possibility of the layers to rub against each other when you going for multi layered type of garments we use it. And the other thing slip will also means basically this slip friction between fabric and the skin. See this fabric and skin friction also has been researched by many people and the friction between cotton fabric and skin, polyester fabric and skin, friction between this skin conditions may change, skin may be little bit of sweat could be there in the skin, skin is also hairy the contact area between the skin and the fabric. So many other parameters which are there can also affect the friction value between the fabric and the skin. How much contact pressure is there at a given point? What is the contact area? That in turn will depend upon what is the surface roughness of the fabric, whether the skin is containing lot of hairs or not whether the skin is partially wet or not. Again obviously, this friction in turn depends upon many other parameters and these parameters will differ from person to person, will differ depend upon the kind of activity, the wetness of the skin will change. So, it is in a way not easy also to design something which will meet the requirement of each and every person or 
we will meet the uh, requirement that a person needs at when he is performing different types of activity. But anyway, these are the things we have to keep in mind that sleep in turn will be influenced by the friction between skin and the fabric and it will also depend between the friction between different layers of the garment. In this diagram, what you see here that what is the level of extensions of the skin? The source is given also here. Here in the shoulder, the extension can go to the extent of 13 and 16 percent. In the sitting posture, here it can go between 4 to 6 percent. This is 4 to 6 percent. Here it is 13 to 16 percent. And how much is here? This is between 35 to 40 percent, very high stretch when I fold our arm. When I fold the knee, this extension is. 35 to 45 percent, so much change happens. That means, this length from here to there increases by 35 to 40 percent, 45 percent. So, in a standing posture, the length from here to there and in a bent posture, in a sitting posture, the length from here to there there is a difference and that difference can go to the maximum of 45 percent. So, you see that so much now the skin stretches could be there that means the body dimension changes by that much and that is why the skin extends to accommodate and accommodate that because skin is very stretchable and therefore, we do not feel at all. So, this is just to give you some idea about the stretching of the skin in different regions and in different postures. Certain facts that we should also keep in mind while thinking about this the fit that during body movement the body expands and contract especially in areas near the joints. We have already seen that body can expand and contract. Therefore, too tight design and non-stretchable fabric will cause the wearer to extremely to be extremely uncomfortable because the body expands and the garment is too tight, then he will feel the pain because he has to will try the body will try to even extend the fabric, which is difficult to extend and therefore, pressure will develop and the person is going to feel uncomfortable. Garment must follow the nature of the body movement, which depends on the tux assigned to the person. So, we must know in advance okay, what is the change in the body dimensions with the movement of the body. Too tight, too loose garments indicate poor fit, like too tight is poor fit too loose also is a poor fit, but both can lead to discomfort. If the garment is too loose, it can also lead to discomfort also. It may also create hindrance to the movement of the body or movement of the person. We have to also keep in mind these aspects. The too loose garment is also that does not meet the good fit. Tight does not meet good fit, to lose also does not meet good fit. Both can create hindrance to the activity of a person. When a person wants to run, a loose garment is not going to help. It will create more problem for him. We have to have right fit. 
heavy and bulky garments suitable for cold climate can hinder body movement. So, we have already discussed about it that how heavy and bulky garments also can create problem with the body movement. Especially for law enforcing agencies like defense personnel, firefighters and police people. So, this can create problem especially when the garment is either heavy or bulky. So, these points you have to keep in mind that depending upon the profession of the person and what are the kind of activity in which the person is going to be engaged in that profession. These things we have to keep in mind while thinking of designing a uniform or a garment for such people. Just some general idea about the fabric type according to stretch. Now, we can broadly classify the fabric from stretchability point of view into two groups. One is stretchable fabric, the other one is rigid fabric. Stretchable fabrics are fabrics which stretch value is more than 15 percent and in the fabric the stretch is less than 15 percent will be known as rigid fabric. So, typically knitted fabrics are usually stretchable. Open fabric are generally rigid, but today we can also have open fabrics which are stretchable. Stretchable open fabrics also can be made. Similarly, rigid knitted fabrics also can be made, but on an average or usually we should say that open fabrics are rigid and knitted fabrics are stretchable. In case of open fabrics, if you use either lycra or spandex or any elastic yarn, we can make the fabric quite stretchable also. This is also possible. Similarly, also we can have knitted fabric which is very, very rigid in nature, extension is much less than 15 percent. Comfort stretch basically means now stretch lying between 15 to 30 percent and power stretch fabrics means the elongation is greater than 30 percent. So, even the stretchable fabrics there are two groups one is comfort stretch and the other one is power stretch. Now, for open and knitted fabrics, since open fabric do not stretch much, so one can make them less restrictive by allowing the fabric to slip. So, let us say this is the body and the fabric garment envelope is like this. So, this is the excess that we have. So, by doing so, whenever the body moves, the garment will simply slip like the sleeve that is designed for our shirts. So, sleeves are generally what there if you look at the diameter of the sleeve is much more than the dimensions of the or the periphery of the hand that we have. The idea is that this can whenever we move our hand it will easily slip on the body because there is very little contact it can slip easily. Besides that, there are other advantage also the air circulation could be there. So, these are other aspects as well, but from the fit point of view this is what we generally done and the design options are keep appropriate allowance of excess between body size and the garment envelope and the excess itself will help the body part, body part to slip over the body if we have this excess. So, because there is hardly any force between the body and the fabric whenever that body part is changing uh, either it is bending or twisting or whatever we do or stretching. The contact is almost not there 
and therefore contact pressure will be very very low and the it will fabric is going to slip easily. In the case of knitted fabrics, they are stretchable generally we know and they can stretch in sympathy with the skin or with the change in body dimensions, they can easily uh, extend. So, they behave like skin itself. So, we, so therefore, knitted fabric will be always suitable for skin fit garments. So, there are certain garments where it has to be skin fit like swimwear, foundation garments, stretches, sky pants, the active sportswear for many such applications for the uniform of the, uh, the ballet dancers. In many cases we need stockings, we need very skin fit garments. So, skin fit garments so, ease is that means there is no excess in these cases. So, that means we have to choose a fabric which can easily extend and hence we go for knitted constructions and we choose fiber which is also stretchable. Which stretch value is much more than say we choose polyester fiber. We do not choose cotton because polyester fiber itself will extend much more than cotton and on the top of it if we have uh, knitted construction, it will give you further stretch and therefore, whatever stretch is required by the skin for, for an activity, the necessary stretch value is there in the fabric itself. For a swim wear, it has to be body tight. So, that we have to reduce the drag between the water and the, the garment that is used to go in. The garment that is the in the case of swimwear that a person is going to wear. We have to minimize the overall surface area of the wear in order to reduce drag. That means, we have to think of a design which will be skin tight. and hence the skin tight garment is required and we can only go for your uh, knitted constructions. Here some typical weights of garments are also given. You see some there are certain garments where the weight is much less underpants, sports, shirt, t-shirt, they are a very, very low value. Whereas, a business suit is quite thick, a typical trouser is 600 to 700 gram, a jeans could be 650 to 800 gram, a far coat is very heavy almost 3 to 8 kg. So, this is gives you typical no, some weight understanding and uh, we have to also see that depending for therefore, these while designing them, the fit requirement will be different. That is what we should know uh, and this is just to give an idea the typical weights of certain garments. Design options for right fit, when a person bends or crotch additional fabric is required in the place of expansion such as buttocks and knees. So, what we have let us say you can have shirt with adequate width or pleats, this kind of shirt design is there, this is to take care of the extension near the shoulder. Crotch gusset to allow leg expansion, it is these areas if you see extra clothing, extra material has been given, so that it can take care of the expansion part in this area, this area. Uh, 
Raglan, Dolman or Kimono sleeves, better fit rounded shoulder. You see look at this, these are the different types of sleeve designing. Raglan, Dolman and Kimono type sleeve. This gives a much better ease to the movement of our arm. Other design options are sleeves to have adequate shoulder width and not too tight, waist lines to be loose enough when a person sits because the waist line is going to expand when person is sitting. When he is standing and sitting in two, two different postures, the, the length of the waist is going to differ. Front opening styles especially suitable in many cases, see most of our shirts are front opening you know, because it helps us to easily button and unbutton it. But in some cases we can have the you know, also the back opening styles of uh, could be required in some cases, especially let us say an example of back opening style is surgeon's gown. A surgeon gown will be always having a back opening. The front side is completely covered so that the surgeon remains protected from infection from the patient and the buttons will be there, the cuts will be there at the back. Large neck openings, pant legs to be large enough to pull over a cast or breast, two piece garment rather than a single piece is preferable, but in some cases single piece garment is only what is required. Accessible front and side pockets for carrying few items. So, these are the various types of design. Now, flexible fit in design is this adjustability also can be introduced, can satisfy unknown population of various body size, because see when a company is manufacturing a product, then the product has to service a large population and in that large population obviously the, the size shape of the person body is going to differ. So, if there is an adjustability can be introduced then that will be a very good you know, aspect of the design. So, difference in width are easier to adjust than difference in length. How? Now, the ways are lacing similar to corset can reduce the size of the garment and bring it closer to the body. Elastic can be used in case of protective garment. So, length or height adjustment is difficult though not impossible, but adjustment of the width of a garment is little bit more easier we can have these options. Length adjustment is introducing can in the form of plates and held closed with the hook and loop tape which can be opened to allow for extra length in sleeve or pant. I think this kind of designs are type of pants and sleeves are now also available. So, these are the some kinds of no, some options that we have and fit for dresses meant for old people. Old people skeleton deforms leading to tilted backward postures, this is very very common. So, the gait also the person changes, hum back occurs, pattern must be adjusted to accommodate the body change in these cases in order to have proper fit. So, the garment meant for old people will be different in design than the garment meant for normal populations. And the other thing is the front fasteners are to be provided especially for older people. The button size has to be bigger so that they can easily the location of the button 
and they can easily uh, make unbutton and button it easily or we can have situations where button may be replaced by some other means like velcros could be there. So, that it becomes easy for the person to uh, wear the dress whenever he wants or remove the dress. Fit and pressure comfort is also important because the garment the person has to carry and in some situation there will be some pressure that will develop between the garment and the and the body. Excessive pressure can cause physiological effects. The pressure comfort is required especially for close fitting garments, swimwear, bras, stockings, girdles. Here it is very very important. Also there are pressure garments, pressure garments for skin healing, the baby huggers. In all these situations there is bound to be some pressure on the human body. But we have to see that the pressure should not go beyond the tolerable limit. So, pressure garment, so we have to keep in mind that in sub situations how much pressure is tolerable and how do I design a garment so that it remains within the tolerable limit. The other consequence of pressure is cardiac output decreases linearly with increase in pressures. Blood flow to lower leg decreases with increase in pressures. So, typically let us say the pressure is 14.1 millimeter Hg adverse effect on blood circulation will be there. 15 to 25 blood flow increase increases 30 to 40 that could be discomfort. So, you should know ki what is the right range of pressure and while designing a pressure garment for some people uh, these things we have to keep in mind. Comfortable pressure range in the west is 3.3 to 6 millimeter Hg, abdomen area this is the value you want, hip area this much, thigh 4.4 to 6.6, side west 12.5 to 20.6. These are the typical pressure range that is tolerable because in many situation we have to make a garment which is lean also and therefore, there is a possibility of some pressure to develop, but as long as the pressure remains within tolerable limit it will be still acceptable. So, you should know ki what are the comfortable range of pressure at different parts of the human body. Pressure comfort, we will discuss about pressure garment design in some other, uh, some other uh, lecture. The main important theory of pressure is this equations. P the pressure is T 1 by R 1 plus T 2 by R 2, where T 1 and T 2 is the fabric tensions in two directions warp and weft and R 1 R 2 is the radiate of the body contour in two principal directions. And if this is the pressure equations, then we can say the pressure is a function of how much stretch is there in the body, sorry not the body, how much stretch is there in the fabric and due to that stretch how much tension is developing in the fabric. So, tension value, tension development in a fabric will depend upon the stretch of the fabric, stretch of the fabric will depend upon how much is the change in body dimension. The other therefore, the other thing is the curvature of the body. So, pressure depends upon body curvature and the tension development of body which in turn depends upon the stretch value and the fabric property, fabric tensile property. 
that is this load elongation curve. So, we should keep in mind this simple this equations and from there we will be able to understand that if we want to keep the pressure within tolerable limit then we should not allow the tension to go very high on the fabric and therefore, the appropriate measures has to be chosen. So, that the pressure remains within limit and uh, we will discuss in more details about the pressure garment design in some other lectures. With this we complete today's discussion that is about all about how to incorporate the fit into the design of various types of design of garments in general either it is uh, garment for technical use or garment for normal uh, day to day activity. With this we close today's discussion, thank you.